In this video, we're taking a look at um, falling chimneys. And they're really just a category of problems. But if we watch this video, you can see the kind of scenario we're looking at. This is a meter stick that's being propped up. Um, and it falls in a way that's a little bit surprising. There's a little ball on one end. And as it falls, it actually falls into that cup, which is kind of interesting. But if we watch it in slow motion, you will see that the ball falls straight down, but the meter stick falls faster than the free falling ball, which should be surprising, right? And we wanna understand why all this happens. Um, these kind of problems are of the fourth category, a situation where the axis of rotation is fixed, um, but the center of mass does move, right? So that's that one. Um, what this means is that the net force equals MA um, and this is the acceleration of the center of mass, but there's also a net torque equals I alpha. They both apply to a single object, but the acceleration is not constant. And when we did rolling problems, we had an acceleration of the center of mass and uh, an angular acceleration, but they were linked together in a way that they would often have a constant acceleration. So what that means though, is because there is no constant acceleration. We can't use kinematics and force analysis easily, at least not for the whole problem. So we're going to focus on energy analysis. Uh, we have no translational kinetic energy uh, because the object doesn't move through space, really. We are not going to use both translational and rotational because the axis isn't moving while the thing is rotating. We're going to use just rotational because all of the motion can be described as rotating about an axis. So here's a scenario, and this is a scenario we looked at in class. Um, you have a meter stick and a ball and a string, and the question is which one will hit the ground, not hit the ground, but get to the lowest point first. Um, and it turns out that we can't use kinematics to solve this because alpha is not constant. We can use conservation of energy. Um, and if we do the calculation, you see that gravitational potential energy for both of them is the start. Um, there's no translational. We're going to do this purely as a rotational kinetic energy thing. Um, and we're going to say the height it falls in the case of the meter stick is the height of the center of mass. So that's going to be half the length of the ruler or the meter stick, so L over 2. Whereas over on the ball side, that distance it falls is going to be L. Um, and then when it comes to the one half I omega final squared, I is going to be one third ML squared. That's a stick around one end, about one end. And then for the ball, it's basically a point particle going around in a circle. So it's just ML squared. The M's cancel out. Um, one of the L's cancels out with both of them. You can isolate omega. And we end up with omega for the meter stick at the end is root 3g over l. For the ball in a string, it's root 2g over l, which we can then translate into the linear velocity at the tip, which is omega times l, which is the full length of the system, to get root 3g l and root 2g l, showing us that the velocity of the tip of the meter stick is faster than that of the ball in the string, um, which is why if you're going faster at the end and you both started at zero, you must have a higher average velocity for the one with the higher final velocity, meaning the meter stick will win the race, right? The meter stick reaches the vertical first. What if the what about the acceleration though? Um, so this is this is interesting, right? We we already saw that video where clearly something was falling faster than little g, and so we can watch this. Um, video as well. Um, this is a ruler with or a meter stick with a bunch of washers sitting on top of it. And you can see that as it falls, the washers, which can just free fall, are basically falling straight down. But the meter stick is falling out from under them, which is kind of an interesting thing. Um, there's, a, there's another video of this in just a second. Um, if we release this, you can watch uh, over there on the side. Again, the washers are falling, basically free falling, and the ruler is falling out from underneath them. You'll notice that some of them stay on it and some of them don't. Um, so that's, it's a very interesting result uh, when we think about how this is happening. So we need to get into the details of it. Well, when it comes to the acceleration, the instantaneous acceleration, 
The accelerations are not constant throughout, but we could find out how big they are at a point in time. We can find alpha, the angular acceleration. We can find the centripetal acceleration. We can find the tangential acceleration, which we'll need all of those. Um, when it comes to the instantaneous centripetal acceleration, uh, we know that at the bottom, the acceleration is uh, going to be omega squared L, or at any point. But omega is root 3G over L, or root 2G over L for the various cases. So we can see that the acceleration at the tip of the meter stick is bigger than the acceleration at the bottom for the ball. Um, we can do the instantaneous acceleration tangentially and, uh, you know, rotationally as well. And we might ask the question, where are these two maxima? Um, you talked about this in class, and we came to the conclusion that since alpha is net torque over I, it's going to be maximum when the force of gravity is straight down and the R is to the right or left, so when they're perpendicular. So this will happen at the top. And where will they be zero? Well, alpha will be zero. Um, when the angle is zero, when it's pointing straight down, because the force of gravity and the R vector will be pointing in the same direction. Right? The torque decreases as it falls until it's zero at the bottom, which hopefully makes sense. Right At the bottom, you're moving the fastest, but there's no force pushing you at that point, and then you swing back up and slow down. Right, This is a modified or a physical pendulum, as we might call it. Um, so how do you find alpha as a function of theta? Well, what you can do is you can think about this basic relationship. Mg times L over 2 is the torque minus the bit about the angle. And so we multiply that by sine of theta. And so we can simplify this down, divide it by the moment of inertia, and you end up with 3g over 2l times the sine of theta which means that at any point as this swings down, we can find the angular acceleration. And the maximum will occur when sine of theta is max, and that occurs when theta is 90 degrees. Um, we can also find the acceleration of the tip. This would be the tangential acceleration, the linear acceleration, translational of the tip. That's alpha times r, where r is the length of the meter stick, and that's just 3 halves g, and that is a big deal. 3 halves g is bigger than g. So this shows that the tip accelerates at greater acceleration than g at the beginning when it's horizontal. The rate of acceleration will slow until it's at the bottom where it has no acceleration, but that's how it works, right? And this is why we get the situation where the washers are free falling and the ruler is falling out from underneath. What about the translational or tangential acceleration of the center of mass. Well, we use the same exact thing. A center of mass is equal to alpha r, but the r this time is half the length of the meter stick. Um, so that's three quarters g sine theta. And so what we have then is that at the beginning, the middle, the midpoint is accelerating slower than g, and the tip is accelerating faster than g. So somewhere along the line is where uh, between the middle and the half is where or sorry, yeah, the middle and the end is where the acceleration of the meter stick is the same as little g, right? And again, that's uh, maximum at 90 degrees. And so why is the acceleration of the center of mass less than little g? Well, the meter stick has to obey Newton's second law, right? And if you think of what's going on here, force of gravity is pulling down, but if I move my video out of the way, is there another force? Of course there is. There must be a force at the pivot point pointing upward. Otherwise, the whole thing would just fall down. And so if you look at this from a standard translational Newton's second law perspective, you have a downward force and an upward force, and the net force is smaller than the force of gravity, right? Net force equals ma, and mg minus whatever that vertical force from the pivot point is, is equal to 3 quarters mg. And so that means this vertical force has to be a fourth of mg. All right, so what are the big ideas here? When we're doing conservation of energy here, you have to watch out. The center of mass moving is what matters for calculating gravitational potential energy. Don't count translational kinetic energy unless both the axis is rot moving and uh, it is rotating. In these cases, it's just pure rotation. 
And when we're talking about Newton's second law, we're talking about the acceleration of the center of mass. And so we look at the particle as if, you know, the forces are all acting at the center of mass. Now, this doesn't mean that you can ignore the fact that it's an extended object when calculating moment of inertia, but this for the linear or translational uh, Newton's second law is what we need to do. No kinematics equations, unless you happen to have constant forces and torques, um, which is not very common with these kinds of problems. All right, so a related problem, the falling chimney. So instead of having something start horizontal and go to the vertical, what if it starts vertical and falls over? When the chimney is upright, the acceleration of the center of mass is zero um, and the alpha, the angular acceleration is zero. If you let it fall, give it a little push, Alpha increases to a maximum when it's horizontal, right? And we already calculated that value, um, but that doesn't happen until it's on the ground. So it just keeps getting faster and faster and faster. And this also means that the tip, right, um, gets close to three halves G. So it's accelerating faster than G. And we know that every part of this is accelerating at a different rate. And of course, a chimney is designed to be held upright, not to you know, be able to flung downward. And so it usually cracks. And the point at which it cracks is the place where you go, uh, is basically where it was accelerating at G, it turns out. Um, so here's a little video showing a demolition, uh, which is kind of a fun one, right? They're just gonna explode a little bit in the front and then it starts, it drops down and then it starts to rotate about that pivot point. Um, and it's a little bit shaky but you'll see that the faster it goes, the more it starts to break apart. And again, there it does. It cracks right at that point you'd expect. Um, so this was our last question. Which hits the floor first, the ruler or the meter stick? And the answer was the ruler wins because the angular acceleration, which depends on sine of theta, is also dependent on the length of the object. So the one that has the shorter length ends up winning. All right, in summary, you can find omega, V and A centripetal. So the angular velocity, the translational velocity and the centripetal acceleration using conservation of energy, ignoring kinematics unless things are constant. But, but then you will need to use the net force and the net torque equations to find the instantaneous uh, alpha or angular acceleration and translational acceleration of the tip or the center of mass or whatever it is. Um, this is the work we were working on in class and that's that. Hope that helps.